You're listening to the Lido Lounge with the Yankee and the Brit on RTM Radio. It might be crazy what I'm about to say. Yeah, the cruise ship's here and it's about to sail. With a SS cruise. Yankee and the Brit, the RTM Radio Network, the sound of a real Mustang. Ha <laughs> ha, love those badass aircraft. Larry knows what I'm talking about, I'm sure about that. Yeah, but we were just, I was just saying in the chat round, we're all right for a request tonight, so long as you know we've already got it. Or just ask us if we've already got it, and if we've got it, we'll play it. Because um, basically, we're just a bit knackered tonight, and we just want to chill out to the music ourselves a bit you know it's been one of those busy weeks of uh honestly busy weeks of not doing much but we've been busy doing honestly i just ain't in the mood to chase them some bitches down so you just gonna have to do without (laughs) that's the way it is tonight guys and gals (laughs) it's the most honest dj in the world (laughs) 
<laughs> I will never lie to you. I'll never keep a, a secret from you. Yeah, we're going to have Dave calling in at the top of the hour. And you can ask any of your cruise-related questions. You guys, it's going on a cruise next week on the Christmas cruise. You know, if you've got any last-minute questions, feel free to bombard Dave with all of your questions. Even if you want to know what colour the sea will be. You know, you ask him anything. Oh, yes, float in azure seas. <laughs> that's what he's there for. <laughs> and then Howard Salmon's going to call in as well. Sorry, I got on. one inch. I got I one inch. So good Shut up! Kill you. I got one inch of fag left and I'm going to finish it. And that's it. They're gone. Oh, one inch. Oh, I'm not had, I'm not had more than an inch in ages. What the? You've had to do it three or four times to give me a good length. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have something more important to talk about? Huh? What's that? You hear that? Oh. You got something playing on Oh, when I refreshed it, bloody opened it up. All right, there you go. Did you hear that? What was it? I wondered what it was. It was the show playing through my headset. Yeah, I when could I hear it. When I refreshed it, it hit play again. I could, and where they're laying, it's probably pick, speaker was picking it up on there. Yes. Oh, well, okay. well, as you can see, we're all organized tonight for the show. And I wish that you would put that last What did I just get done telling out. you? Out! Do it Look, now! Look, I'm down to a half an inch. <laughs> Shut hey, up. Hey, that's on flop. <laughs> Smurfette, what request? You have to remind us yeah, regularly. You, just, just ask if, if we've got it, we'll play it. And if we haven't, then tough shit type thing. What genre for tonight's show? Just something not quite... Five finger death punch. <laughs> yeah, we don't mind a bit of rock, but not too heavy. Yeah, it's, Seriously, it's guys. Sunday, the Lido Lounge. We like to just, you know, like you're on the ship, just cruising, relaxing, and Yeah, we're the... all just a bit too chilled out tonight. Are you trucking yet, Joe, or are you at home yet? Because if you're trucking, I'm not going to keep you up all night. Not tonight. Oh, you can keep me up all night. I don't mind. <sighs> <laughs> this is how it goes, right? On a Friday night, we start, we rock our socks off and we're like, yeah, this is really cool. And then you guys will go and ask for another hour. So and then as soon as we're like, yeah, let's do another hour. And then as soon as we get like into the second or third song, we're like, fuck, we're just committed to the whole hour. And we're only <laughs> the third song in. Tell me I'm not right here. You're right. And then, when, and then I'm when ready it, for my nap, Ethel. And then when it comes to Saturday night, if you guys want an extra hour, you know, people are like, Huh, you'll do it for rock, but not for country. We're just like, screw that. Fuck that. We didn't See, Larry's happy. To, Larry's, <laughs> Larry's tickled to death that it's not going to be outrageously loud. <laughs> That's my head driver right there of the RTM Radio Network fleet. Yes, sir. That's right. Okay, what are we doing over here? Uh, somebody requested yesterday Wagon Wheel, so I guess we'll do that now. Yes. Foo Fighters! Foo Fighters! I ain't got no panties on. Yankee and the Brit, the RTM Radio Network. Put your panties back on. I know, I'm smelling a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Just a wee bit, don't you know? <laughs> Joseph said, no, not Bee Gees, Brantley Gilbert. How the hell are we supposed to know we who that is? Brantley Gilbert. Bee Gee. I thought, first thing I thought was a Bee Gees too, and I thought, yeah, some cool music from Joe for a change. And then Larry's like, that sounds good, Donna. Bee Gees. <laughs> yeah, why don't we do the, uh, ha, 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 ha. Stay alive, stay alive. Stay alive. Ha, 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 ha. Stay alive. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't even attempt to do Bee Gees. That's your next song request. <laughs> Um, Larry has requested that you sing Staying Alive by the Bee Gees. Now he knows better than that because for it would next, sound just like the other the one I did show. for him. Look in the chat. He has requested that Larry says you've got to sing it by the next show, by next weekend. Chop, chop. Get on it. Mountains, what Randy said. Now she's got two requests. <laughs> You got two requests. You trying to nail one that we have? Is that what <laughs> yeah. you're trying to do? We have like thousands and thousands and thousands of songs, and only you would choose the one that we haven't got. Exactly. <laughs> so, what was I saying? I forgot something I was going to say, and of course you interrupted me again. Uh, we will do some BGs, Larry. As a matter of fact, I don't know if I have any Brantley Gilbert, anyways. Yeah. Not you exactly on the do. top of the pops, you know. 
But let me look real quick, just so I can say I looked. Just for my buddy Joe over here. For for Mr. Rattler. I have Gilbert O'Sullivan. How's that sound? That'll do. How about some Brantley Gilbert, Small Town Throwdown? Will that work for you? We do have some. Smurfette said some bare naked ladies. Oh, yeah, okay. We can Once, do that. But in the meantime. Five. What? Bonus. In the meantime. <laughs> it's like the first thing you think of, isn't it? Yes. Horny bitch. <laughs> in the meantime, let's take care of Smurfette over here, shall we? Smurfette. Smurfette. Why did I say that like that? Darren Hayes. It is Sunday. The Yankee and the Brit in the Lido Lounge, a Sunday edition. Dave will be in here at 8 o'clock. Square you up on the latest details. Prepare you for your upcoming cruise. Oh, baby, everybody's headed to the warm weather. I know. So festive. I can't wait to see all the pictures that come back. And you guys, try and get a picture of you all together in your Christmas cruise shirts that uh, you guys ordered. Because I know quite a few of you have ordered them. Um, try and get a picture of you all together in your cool shirts. And somebody ordered some late ones, right? Yeah, somebody ordered some last night. And and, uh, and I says, well, the deadline was the 23rd. But if you're all right with it, I'm all right with it. And we're going to get them straight out the door tomorrow morning. And um, hopefully she'll get them in time. Hopefully. They're all cut and they're ready and they're ready to go on. And Yes. Yes. So uh, we'll do, 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 do the best we can with that kind of thing. So anyways, let's... Uh, Keep the trucks rolling here, baby. That's right. Small town throwdown. Yes, sir. That's a partying kind of lifestyle. I remember that from way back yonder when I was young. Back yonder. Back yonder, he says. (laughs) Uh, Lee. Hey, Lee. What's going on? He wants to hear Grandma got... Are we ready to do Christmas music yet? We said we weren't going to do Christmas music for a little while yet. But, but for you... Did, but we did say, if we have it, we'll play it. Yeah, I know it. So we might play it, I guess. So you guys need to request... <laughs> Shut up! Don't say it! <laughs> uh, don't say it! <laughs> don't arrows, say it! Arrows, no, no, no. <laughs> Don't, don't, don't. Ah. Ah, ah. <laughs> you, guys, you guys need to request... Don't want to close my eyes. I won't play it. I don't want to... I won't play it! Deep. Because I miss you, Randy, and I don't want to miss a thing. Yeah, shut up. So you guys all need to get in the chat room and request it. Don't even waste your typing. Don't young. waste your typewriter ink. <laughs> Save it, because I'm not going to play Do it. It's probably the most retarded friggin' gay bait fucking song I've ever heard. <laughs> yeah. Not playing it. <laughs> but I am going to do this request for Smurfette. Five for fighting. What if? With the Yankee and the Brit. Through a line. 946 with the Yankee and the Brit in the RTM radio network. Truck and Roundup and Trucker Path are joining together to make this app better for you, the American trucker. If you currently don't have the app, I encourage you to download it today from the Google Play Store for your Android or for your iPhone. We are here trying to help make this app better for you. Hey everyone, this is Cheryl from Chuckin' Roundup. Y'all don't forget to come out on Thursdays at 4 p.m. Central Times. This Thursday, December 3rd, we're going to have a special guest, KeepTrucking.com. They're going to come in and teach us how to use their apps. It's great for owner operators. I'm a personal use of it. And they're also going to explain how it helps with the e-log system. Y'all come on out, join us. Look forward to seeing y'all. Join SS Cruises as we once again present the Truckers Gone Wild Cruise. We'll sail on the beautiful Carnival Glory from the bustling city of Miami, Florida. The Glory will take us to the incredible ports of St. Thomas, San Juan, Amber Cove, Dominican Republic, and Grand Turk. Soak in the sunny, serene rhythms of the Eastern Caribbean's beautiful sun-dabbled islands. A Carnival Cruise to the Eastern Caribbean sails to some of the region's most storied isles, each ringed by rainbow-hued coral gardens. Dig your feet into the silky sand, float in azure seas, and let your cares melt away in the Eastern Caribbean. An initial non-refundable reservation of $50 per person is due by June 14th, 2016. And note, this is just a reservation. To receive a cabin assignment, full deposit will be required. A full deposit...
deposit of $250 per person is due by September 14, 2016. Final payment is due by December 5, 2016. We hope to see you on board. Yankee and a Brit in the Lido Lounge Sunday edition with Mr. Dave coming up in just about 10 minutes or so. Make sure you hang in there. You got any questions before your cruise? Uh, better get them out to them. Make sure you got your shit packed, your paperwork all in order, and be prepared to party. By request, one week, bare naked ladies. It's been one is all. Bye bye. Oh, about five and a half minutes away from Mr. Dave in the Lido Lounge. Make sure you stay here. Uh, you got any questions about your cruise coming up? Mr. Dave, I'm sure, can take care of that. One more to throw the road here, and then we'll get on with Mr. Dave. Mr. Dave in the Lido Lounge coming right up. Joe, thanks for erasing your message, man. Couldn't read a friggin' word of it. Well, except for the fact I forgot to call Dave. Dave is not in the building <laughs> yet. <laughs> Sorry about that. But, there he uh, is, look. There he is. Of course, he's not plugged in because Donna's not doing her job either. Oh, Dave. What Fancy the not hell? not making me plug you in. What a piss poor operation we got I going on know. over here. <laughs> okay, Mr. Dave, there you are. How are you doing? Not too bad, Dick. <laughs> I told Donna, I go, Dave's not in the building. Dave's not even on the f- damn phone yet. <laughs> I'm up here. So, buttons on your underwear. What's going on? Everything all right up there? Are you getting, any, are you getting all that rain yet? No, yeah, we got a, quite a bit of rain Friday and uh, Saturday. Finally stopped last night, and God, it's gotten cold. Can you turn your phone down just a click or two? Who, me? No. Yes, you. Donna. <laughs> Shut up. There. That's probably better. Okay. Uh, I'm totally discombobulated now. Uh, what's going on cruise-wise? When you guys, what's going on now? The cruise is coming up when? Uh, Larry and I fly out next Saturday afternoon. So, so this coming Saturday. So a week away, generally. Yeah, next Sunday at this time, we'll already be out at, we'll already be out at sea. And where is this y'all are going to? We're going to Key West, which I absolutely love. Uh, Grand Cayman and Cozumel. Ooh, nice. Now, how many of the chatters here tonight are going with you? Do you know? Uh, well, we got Jason, Tiffany, Darren, Elizabeth going. And I think that's all that's in the chat. We got, about, we got about 30 total going, if that many. So it should be a nice, easy cruise for you. Yeah, and I think there's, there's going to be about maybe about 18 people with those, uh, with those uh, Christmas truckers gone wild shirts on. So uh, I was sure. saying to KC in the chat that, uh, that we need a picture of all you guys in your cool shirts. Oh, this is the Christmas cruise? Yeah, those ones that ah. like what we've been doing today. All right, so this is the Christmas cruise that we've been making the shirts for. I had no idea. Yeah. Yeah, if you got them shirts, you better get them out because we all uh I know uh, Jason and Tiffany, I think they're going to be down there next Friday. Yeah, we, we, we set the deadline as the 23rd of November, and then somebody contacted me last night and said, hey, can we get a couple more of those shirts? And I says, well, you know, we're past the deadline, but if you're happy with it, you know, when you're happy that they'll go, we'll, we'll have them straight out the door tomorrow. You know, she asked me last night, and we'll pick the shirts up in the morning, and they'll be straight out the door by the afternoon, you know. We'll so let's just best. cross our fingers that the government does their friggin' job yeah, for a Yeah, we'll do our best to get, get them out to her. Um, but then there will be about 18 of you on the ship with those cool shirts on. So we're going to have to get loads of pictures of you guys. Yeah, we got to have those to post up on the on the uh, T-shirt page. So make sure you get us your pictures. Please. Yeah, it, it, it's going to be a fun cruise. Uh, Key West is one of my favorite places. Is that because it's warm or clean, or what's the reason? Well, it's warm, it's clean. Um, 
it's safe. I mean, there's just so much to do there. Uh, you know, just see the sights. There's plenty of bars and lounges. A lot of popular bars and lounges like Sloppy Joe's. Um, even though it's in the States, it's still a good place to go. And what exactly is that supposed to mean? Well, it's still part of the United States. It's not like you're going to a different country when you go to Key West. You're in the States because oh, it's I part see. of Florida. I see what you're saying. And then we'll go to Grand Cayman and then Cozumel, and everybody will they'll love everybody. It's a good itinerary. Well, good. It would be nice to hear everybody be happy. Yeah, there's not one bad port at this uh, on this cruise. Now, how long is this for? Four days? It's, a, it's only a six-day cruise. <laughs> <laughs> Leave it to Larry. Lots of gays there too. <laughs> yeah, we went down there last October. It was during the um, God. I forgot what it was called down there, but that's when everybody was dressed up in body paint. Yeah, I remember they, you mentioning that. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody had nobody had their. I mean, the women were you know, they were all body painted up, no clothes, plain sight. I suppose that has its scary moments, too. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> but you wouldn't notice. <laughs> well, last October when we went down, they had everybody basically back on the ship by 2.30 in the afternoon. Oh. Uh, for, come nighttime, I guess it gets really wild down there. That's what you go for. Live your life. Enjoy yourself. No holds barred. Exactly. Well, that's a good thing. So you said seven days? Six. It's six. It's six days. Six days. You leave on Saturday, get back on Friday. Uh, no, we sell out on set Sunday. Oh. And we come back on Saturday. Uh, but Larry and I, we're going to be down there the day early, so we're going down a day early. We fly out next Saturday. I think our flight leaves Columbus at like three thirty. Cool. And just so everybody knows, we have no problem with gays, so don't think that's it's just. Larry, what a clown. <laughs> Don't worry, Larry. You can find somebody to spend the evening with. It shouldn't be a problem. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a good time. Everybody, everybody that's going is going to enjoy it because there's not one bad port on that on that itinerary. Usually when we do cruises, unfortunately, you have to take a bad port. And this one, it's not, there's not one bad port at all. So, is there any last-minute things anybody should know? Uh, make sure you have your passport. Be prepared for TSA. Don't bring this. Bring that. Blah blah blah. TSA. Yeah, make sure you go online. Do your online check-in. Uh, if you've got passports, get your pa bring your passports. Uh, bring your photo ID. Uh, if you don't have passports, bring your birth certificates, certified copy, um, photo ID. And if the lady's last names do not match on the birth certificate with a photo ID, documentation, why? You mean like because they got married? Exactly. Bring a marriage license. And uh, if you don't have a birth certificate? You ain't getting on the ship. You can't get on the ship if you haven't got a birth certificate? No. Wow. Nope, and they, they strictly enforce it. If you do not have a birth certificate or a passport, you will not board that ship. Well, that's something uh, a bit last minute if you guys don't already know about it, which I'm probably sure you do. I didn't know about it personally. but What about your smokes? Can you bring your cigarettes, or do you have to buy them off the ship, or can you bring as many as you want? What's the story with that? Yeah, you can bring your smokes on. Just bring enough to get you through until the store is open, because once the store is open, the ships are, or the cigarettes on the on the ship are so cheap. Oh, really? Cheaper than what you can buy them at the stores, huh? Oh, yeah. It's 50%. Uh, I could get five cartons on the ship for, or four cartons for 112 bucks. Now, can you buy your smokes on the ship, and when you dock at the end of the cruise, bring them home with you? Mm-hmm. So you'd be silly not to buy them then, if that's the case. Yeah, I'll buy four cartons. I'll, you're only allowed to bring one or two cartons home per person. But I'll have four. I'll have four cartons that I'll buy. As soon as the shop's open, I'll probably burn through almost a carton while I'm on the ship. 
and then I'll end up having to bring home three. Well, that's not too bad. That's a pretty good deal. Huh? They just allow you only four, so there's enough to go around. Is that the idea? Yeah, they don't. Yeah, yeah. Customs is funny. They, you know, a lot of times they don't say anything. I've never been busted, unfortunately. This is a crazy story. Two years ago, when we went out to New Orleans, uh, Chrissy and I did a back to back cruise with Larry. So we were out at sea, basically. We did two cruises, 12 days of cruising, back to back. And we came home with 22 cartons of cigarettes. Jeez. <laughs> Laura just said something about their weird brands. They're not all brand names. What's, uh... uh no, it's the brand names. Uh, Marlboro, and that's what I smoke. Marlboro Whites, Marlboro. Uh, I think they've got Cool, Newport. Um, it just depends. But you know what? For the price, you know, let's say you smoke... A generic brand of just that tastes like Marlboro. For the price, hell, smoke Marlboro for a week. Yeah, if they're that cheap, I suppose if you could suffer. Some people are really picky about that. Yeah, I mean you're talking well, twenty two about twenty two dollars a carton, twenty three dollars a carton, and I pay almost sixty a carton here. Is there a Newport Red? I'm not sure what they have done. I know Marlboro's a big one, and those are the ones I buy. Have you ever heard of a brand called Time? Uh uh-uh. uh. My mom smokes those. And uh, when I run out, I go pinch some of hers. Well, tonight, unfortunately, we're both out, so we're both. She called me. You got any cigarettes? I'm dying over here. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I never heard of them, so I go over and pinch some of hers when I run out, and they're actually not too bad. They're uh, very light. They're easier to smoke than anything, and they have a they have a fairly decent taste to them, and they're cheap. They're cheaper than the uh, Pall Mall Reds I get, and cheaper than Marlboro. Yeah. yeah, I don't know what you guys pay down there in Texas, but we're basically six dollars a pack here in Ohio. Yeah, that's insane. They're four and five dollars here, depending on what yeah. brand. Hey, just that's why when, that's why when I get on the ship, as soon as the store opens, I I immediately I just go and drop a hundred twelve bucks. Yeah, I think I'm paying for something a pack. And I don't buy them by the carton because if I buy them by the carton, I'm a Christ, I'd never stop fucking smoking them. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's a little expensive to buy them by the carton, but when I run out, I'm not one to just jump in the truck and run to the store and get another pack of smokes. I'll wait till the next day or something. So like tonight, you know, I'm sitting here fidgeting, wishing I had one, but that's all right. Donna doesn't need to smoke, and it's okay if I do go without a little bit, so it kind of helps. Yeah. Yeah, I'm kind of glad that he's got nothing to smoke. I know, you ain't got nothing to bitch about, man. Well, I do got something to smoke over here, but I don't know if I want that or not. I'm serious, Dave. (laughs) My throat for about the past three months has just been awful. And uh, when when he lights a cigarette, you know, I go to talk and I can't get my sentence out in full because the smoke just, uh, like, fills up my mouth. It's... It's not very, not very nice at the minute. Dawn you know, wants. You're not too well. Oh, I'm sorry. Dawn wants to know if there's a way to find out if her brand is on the ship. Uh, no. I really, unless you know, going to one of the cruise groups, maybe ask somebody. Other than that, like I said, I I know they've got Coles, Marlboro, uh, Newport. It is a select. It is a limited supply of what they got. Can, how many? How many packs of your own brand can you bring with you? I mean, can you bring five, six, ten cartons if you want, or is that limited to how many you bring on the ship also? No, I would be careful. Why would you bring ten cartons with you? No, I'm just saying, you know, is there a limit as to what you can bring on, or? I'm not sure if there's a limit of what you can bring on, but you don't want to, you know, of course they've got the uh, state tax code on them, so I guess if they ever did question it, and you'd say, hey, I brought them on, and they'd probably be like, why the hell would you stupid enough to bring 10 cards of cigarettes on? Maybe somebody's a heavy smoker. Thanks, Casey. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> How many packs do you go through in a day? Who, me? Yeah. Oh, about two, sometimes three. Man, I remember, I remember at one point when I was trucking, I was up to almost just about Five and a half packs a day, just sitting there in that seat, man. I, all of a sudden, it dawned on me what I was doing, man, and I cut that shit right back and went back to about two packs a day. But man, I couldn't realize I was smoking that damn much. Yeah. Yeah, you 
you get him back up to a pack a day or so, aren't you? Uh, no, no, a pack and a half a day. Or a pack, not a pack and a half. A pack every day and a half or so. Two days, generally. <laughs> Seems like you're always smoking at the minute. It's probably because of my throat and it just being in the air, you know. What else? Uh, Dave brings a suitcase full of toilet paper. So is that right what Math is saying in the chat? You don't need to bring a birth certificate if you've got your passport. Yeah, if you've got your passport, which we recommend everybody has, passport is the easiest way to travel. Right, so that's cool. And you and you you even know that, Donna. Yeah, but just uh, it's just it just was funny when you like said, you know, everybody must have a birth certificate. I was like thinking, I didn't know that. Somebody should have told me that. <laughs> you know what I'm like. You brought yours, didn't you? Yeah, I've got mine. It's got my old name on it. It's got O'Neill on it. Yeah, so you couldn't get on the ship then? Oh. Unless you went as Don O'Neill. Yeah. Can you do that? What? If your birth certificate, let's say it has your maiden name on it and you're married, can you go as yourself? Or that means your driver's license has to match your marriage certificate and blah, blah, blah. Well, if the photo ID does not match the birth certificate, you've got to have documentation stating why. Yeah, so my my passport right now matches my birth certificate. So, so you can yeah, and, 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 yeah, and if you and if you've got a passport, <coughs> even if you are married, like like right now, your passport may say O'Neill, but you're married to Randy. They don't need to know that you're married. Just you just go on and say, hey, this I, I am who I am. Yeah, yeah. So the passport Instead of going through the trouble of changing all of it. So the passport is the king of traveling. Oh, yeah, and it will be the king. I see it coming down the pike here in the next couple of years. We are not going to be able to travel anywhere in this country without a passport. That's even flying from here to Dallas. Yeah, I know. That's getting to be totally fucking stupid with that shit. Well, everybody goes through a thorough background check. The government knows who's who. I think um, Smurfette was talking. She said something like uh, she'd have to have a marriage certificate even though she's divorced and she doesn't have a divorce decree. And I think you can go to the courts and get a copy. Because when, when you got your divorce, they, it said on there that there was a, that you could get a copy of your certificate, couldn't you? Mm -hmm. For just a couple of dollars, it wasn't a lot at all. Um, but it's worth it for things like that. And I think, I think you have to have your copy of your divorce thing when you want to remarry, I think, don't you? Is that right? Yeah. yeah, well, yeah the, bottom, the bottom line is, if you're going to cruise once or twice a year, just get the passport. Some people just, they refuse to do it. They just won't do it. They won't spend the money. You know, you'll spend $2,000 on a cruise, but you won't spend $150 for a passport that lasts you 10 years. Yeah, to go on the cruise that you spend all that money on, I know it doesn't make any sense sometimes. And it's, it's a simple process. It takes about 20 minutes to fill the application out. You go up, get your picture taken, done. You, get, you, you do the oath, you're done, you send it out. It comes to you in the mail, you know, four or five weeks later. Yeah, it's like buying a car without a radio in it. Why not spend the extra 50 bucks and get a radio in the thing? Exactly. I'm just being serious. Hey, Laura. You? You all right? <laughs> yeah, I'm all right. That's my favorite line. I'm only serious. <laughs> so, I guess uh, any last words? Uh, <laughs> I guess I don't Sounds mean it like that way. Sounds like you're about to kill him. I know. Well, are you? That's what I'm laughing about. Any last words? <laughs> any last words before they board the Titanic? Yeah, any final requests? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I guess we will see everybody down there next Friday. Larry and I, I think we get to the airport about 8.50. So hopefully we're over at the uh, hotel by about 9.30. Now, do you have any kind of party night, or is it just we'll see you at the bar if you're there? We'll see you at the bar if you're there, because uh, they do have a lounge there. So. And where is it, y'all, are meeting? Uh, at the Roadway Inn and Suites in Fort Lauderdale. Cool. And uh, what time is your flight getting in? You're getting in quite late, aren't you? Yeah, we don't get there until close to 9 o'clock at night. So all these guys are all going to be partying with hard without you? Well, that's all right. When we come back, we're staying an extra night. I had some, we started doing that years ago, and I just, I can't. When we come off the ship, you're just drag-ass tired. So I, we go back to the hotel, we just stay an extra night. This 
And because that's what sucks when you get off the ship and we come back on that ship on a Saturday. So I don't know how busy the port will be, but like at Fort Everglades or Fort, Fort Lauderdale on a Sunday, it's not uncommon to see 10 ships sitting in there. So you got 60,000 people all going to the airport at the same time. Yeah, that's asking for oh, chaos. Oh, it's, it's insanity. Uh, it takes you hours to get checked in and to get through. And of course, they won't let you go to the terminal until two hours before your flight. So you end up stuck sitting down in the uh, waiting area for four or five hours. So I just get off the ship, extra 120, 140 bucks. I'll go sit in the hotel, relax that day, and enjoy another day of warmth. Sounds like Walmart on Black Friday. Yeah, I mean, it's it's vacation. There's no rush. That's like in February. We're probably going to come home two or three days after the cruise. That's just to chill a little more or what? Well, number one, the airline prices, because we come back the day the ship comes back on Valentine. Prices are extremely high that day, and they're pretty high. Typically, Mondays are always an expensive day to fly anyway because of the business travelers. So we're looking at coming back on Tuesday or Wednesday. We'll just go back to the hotel, relax. We go sightseeing, we go sightseeing, go check out Southern Florida. You haven't uh, booked your flight yet then for that? No, not for February. You, why? What's wrong with pre-booking early enough that it might save you some money? Uh, because I've been watching it, and it's getting cheaper and cheaper. Oh, well, if you're on top of it then, I guess that's a key to the thing. Yeah, a couple of weeks ago I looked at it. It was going to cost us close to 1100 I got on last night, and I got it down to, oh, my gosh, it was about $700 for the three of us, round trip. I saw the other day on the news a lot of the flight prices were coming down they, because they uh, there's a couple new carriers running back and forth across the company, I think, so that brought the prices down a little more. Yeah, we've got a legion coming into Dayton, so that's going to throw some more competition in our area. Um, but yeah, the, I, I never book my flights too early because I mean, there's nothing worse to, you know, book your flights. Ah, I just paid twelve hundred dollars. I think I did a great job, and then six months later you get on there and you're like, ah, oh, crap. Now it's only six. Yeah, well. <sighs> That's just thinking. That's all that is. Just watching what's going on. It's like watching the stock market. Yeah, my neighbor across the street, he'll come over the week before we go on our cruise in February, and he'll say, hey, can you help me get my airline ticket? And he'll get his for half the price of what I paid for him. Yeah, it's hard to know when to do it, isn't it? Because, uh, you know, you could go and, uh, you could go and, you know, like at the moment you say it's getting cheaper and cheaper. And, uh, you know, there's that little something inside you that says, oh, you know, just wait, wait a bit more. It's going to keep getting cheaper and cheaper. But then you could go to order and find that it's really expensive again. I mean, that that exact thing there happened to me with my bloody flights coming over to America. You know, the prices were going down and I bided me time and then bang, they went up. Yeah, I'll book these when I get back a week after next. I'll just go on there and book them. Whatever it is is what it is. Mm hmm. You know, I don't. We don't wait till the last minute, but you never know. They always throwing out deals, and if you just by chance get one of them deals, like I did last December when I flew down to Dallas to meet uh, pick up Larry, or he picked me up. I got down there for twenty nine dollars. What? Hell. And do you have to have a passport for local flights like that? Uh not not right now, but I just I see it coming down the road. Yeah. I did, oh, I, I wouldn't be surprised. That cause, uh, cause you, cause you have to have a passport in the UK just to travel like down to London from Derby, you know where I'm from. Um, yeah. I did wonder whether you know you guys have to have a passport here for, you know, in the same country. I'm surprised we don't already myself. Yeah, it will be. They back when nine eleven happened. Oh man, you were gonna. It took forever to get our passports the first year we applied because our mom kept saying, get your passports. You're not going to be able to cruise without them. And that government kept saying, you're, you're, you're going to have to have passports to go on cruises. So we got ours, you know, right after 9-11. And now it's, with all the crap going on, I just can't see them not making it mandatory. Yeah, same with the railroad. Right now you can ride Amtrak. You don't need one, but it's coming down to that. 
Yeah, it's going to hurt the cruise industry on right out the gate. Yeah, but eventually everybody will come around. They'll have to. Hey, oh, no. Have, yeah, if you want to go on a cruise, you'll have to. You, you, either, you either do it or you don't. Hey, I did mean to mention earlier when we were talking about shirts, you know, we mentioned about the, the, the lady that asked for some shirts last night, even though you're cruising in about a week's time. Um, I did mean to mention that about the 2016 February cruise. The deadline for those shirts, uh, for you to order your shirts, is the 15th of December. Um, now, we can we can do them for you at a later date, but uh, it, the the date the deadline date is just basically advisory. You know, if you we want to make sure that we get them out to you on time. Um, and we're totally happy to send them out to you at a later date. It's just that we want to be sending them out comfortably, you know. Um, so, you know, if people do stick an order in later than the 15th of December, you know, we're absolutely fine with that. But, uh, you know, as soon as Christmas is gone, you know, we want to get them out the door so that you guys get them in time. So, you know, you can sneak in a few last minute orders. I know we was a bit strict with that, weren't we? But... You know. Hey, I just saw Joe talking about the Twix card. Do you know anything about that? No, it's not. It's not acceptable for travel on ships. Don't all the drivers have to have that now? Yeah, I, Randy, I don't know. I was thinking that they all had to have it, but maybe you only needed to go into the ports or something. I can't quite remember how that worked. That sounds like a good thing for Kevin to get a hold of. Yep, Twix card. I'm not familiar with. Oh, well. Trucking's you... not my game. Imagine that. Hard to believe, isn't it? Yeah. Who will ever fuck it? I bet if Dad was here, he'd know what it was all about. Oh, yeah, no, Dad would. He, yeah, he'd know. He, he kept up on all that stuff. Hell, yeah, I should too, but I don't. That's and what the drivers are for. They're supposed to know all that stuff. And your dad's birthday a few days ago on Thanksgiving, was that right? Yeah, it was on uh, Thanksgiving. We should sing a little song, shouldn't we, Randy? Huh? Huh? No. <laughs> I was joking. <laughs> that was quite. I can turn. I can turn down the volume on a computer. Now this time, I have to pull the <laughs> phone away from me. That was quite the fast response there. That was quite the fast response. No. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dave. You saved me again. <laughs> You're welcome, Randy. I saved us both. Dave. Randy loves it just as much as I do. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> baby. I love it. Well, if you don't have anything else to add, we're going to pop out of here and we're going to get back to some tunage over here. Yes, Howard Salmon's going to be calling in in just a little bit's time, isn't he? Well, he says he is. He is. We'll see what happens. He's a bit wishy uh, that one, but yeah, I'm sure he'll call in. Smoke a cigarette uh, for me. Well, I guess I'll talk to you guys two or three weeks. Bye, Mr. Happy sailing. Day. And Bye. Joseph's going to be calling in in your place. Um, so hopefully he's going to have something intelligent to talk about. Who's calling in my place? Joseph. He's going to call in for the next two weeks. He's going to call in and talk us to death. <laughs> sure <laughs> <he'll>... oh. <laughs> sure, okay. Sure he'll have a story or ten. Well, enjoy your cruise, Mr. Dave. And same to you, Mrs. Dave. Oh, she's not going, but... oh. She'll enjoy the week away from me. Oh, we'll enjoy some time with her by ourselves. <clears throat> there you go. Dave, dance. Are you done? Will you shut up a minute? I was shaking. I was doing the Dave's <sighs> dance. Goodbye, Mr. Dave. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <coughs> Cruises. If you got the blues and you need a cruise, who you gonna call? Dave Summers! If you wanna be here and get on the ship, who you gonna call? Dave Summers! I ain't afraid of no boats. I ain't afraid of no boats.
one of a kind. Don't be left behind. Who can you call? Game Summers! Great tropical breeze and a coconut tree. Wow, who you gonna call? Game Summers! I ain't afraid of no boats. I ain't afraid of no boats. I ain't afraid of no boats. With SS Cruisers, I ain't afraid of no boats. Who you gonna call? Game Summers! If you're all alone, pick up the phone and call. of paper logs, there's a better way to track your driving hours. The Keep Trucking Electronic Logbook. It's an app that lets you do your logs on your iPhone or Android device for free. If you make a mistake, you can edit your logs just like you would on paper. Keep Trucking alerts you if you have any violations so you never have to worry about failing an inspection. And best of all, Keep Trucking is free. Search Keep Trucking on the Apple App Store or Google Play Store or visit KeepTrucking.com to learn more. And remember, keep on trucking with the Keep Trucking app. Yankee and Brit, the RTM Radio Network. You can edit your logs just like you can on paper. Best thing is it doesn't show the eraser marks or where you tore the paper while you're trying to... <laughs> edit my logs? I'm not putting my hand in the toilet. Just say that I can give my poo a smudge. Just can't have a show without a little poo, can no, we? No, you cannot. Oh, my freaking God, <laughs> believable. Oh, dear. I'm disgusting, aren't I? Such a That's pig. That's why I love you. You're my little piggy. <laughs> That's why you married me. My little piggy. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like something to get your kids for Christmas. My little piggy. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Not to be confused with my little pony. And then wrap up your wife and send it to the oh, dog. Oh, jeez. So, anyways, Joe's <laughs> going to fill in for uh, Dave while he's gone. That'll yes, be different. Is. I mean, nice. I mean, thanks, Joe. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> you guys make sure you're here to be interesting. Yeah, Christine, ready, you, <laughs> Christine, you talk quite a bit when we get you on the phone, so I think you'll have plenty to say. Call and talk about an upcoming cruise or something. Anybody's maybe, welcome to call. Maybe you know? we should just get Mouth on the phone and Joe on the phone and just leave them to it and go out for the night. <laughs> um, <laughs> Joe, you're on in two seconds. Joe, you're on. Okay, Donna, let's go to dinner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we got to be back in three hours, though. <laughs> okay, Joe, two seconds left. <laughs> well, I just started. That's what I'm afraid of. <laughs> 
So, anyways, why not? Anybody's welcome to call. Anybody wants to call anytime, please do. Anytime. Oh, jeez. <laughs> All right, I was into the middle of something. I forgot what the hell it was. So let's go over here and let's play a request for Lee. Um, he'd ask for some Cheech and Chong Christmas. So uh, tell you what, here it is. Yankee and Brit, the RTM Radio Network, 833. Makes it organic. I dig that. Man. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah, I dig that, man. Cheech and Chong. Hey. We They're just, cool. We just had Howard Summon singing Cheech and Chong down the phone. And um, <laughs> we didn't we didn't have the microphone on on the computer. So, so here he is. <laughs> Howard Salmon. Hi, Howard. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> I can hear you that time. <laughs> Doing all right. Where are you at today? Oh. I'm over here in uh, your Syracuse, New York, believe it or not. Where? Syracuse, New York. Oh, up my old stomping grounds. Very good. I used to live east of there out, uh, you know where Exit 40 is in Weedsport? Uh, who? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought. That's what I thought. Well, it's out there somewhere, right? That's right. Everything's somewhere. It's over by the Finger Lakes, Skinny Atlas, over around that neck of the woods. I got you. So, all right, I have to agree with you, but I'll, I, I still have to say, say what? Say what? Don't worry, I do that every day. <laughs> yeah, she doesn't under she doesn't understand a word I say half the time, anyways. No, no. Well, Howard was just saying he's having trouble understanding my English. I can't imagine why. Oh, we have to teach you American, but it's okay. I'll deal with your English. <laughs> Hey, these guys in the chat room, say hello to Howard. He's on the phone right now. <coughs> well, hello, everybody. Get on, get on in the chat room and say hello. How you doing? Yay. You tell him. Hey, you know, you know, you guys were talking Cheech and Chong, you know, and I, I really like that one with, you know, the Santa, Santa Claus, about the story of Santa Claus, you know. You know, you go to the team, I'm on the seat, no, no, Mr. Santa Claus, the guy with the hair on his chest, he's walking down the street, with her shoes on his feet, and he's going to, uh, he goes, hey, what you doing, man? Hey, I'm writing a song about Santa Claus. Oh, uh, man, that's Santa Claus, you know? Oh, yeah, man, I play with those dudes, man. No, 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 he loves me, just, hey, man, I'm hip, he ain't really good, you know? I love that guy, you know, these guys are pretty good, though, you know? <laughs> Is he talking about me? Uh, yeah, he's talking about you. Yeah. He, was, he was saying how much you're a great guy and how much he, he loved loves me. You. I heard him. I heard him say he loved me. Yeah, he does. Thank you, Howard. Oh, uh, thank you. Welcome. But I love, I love how these guys were so good with their uh, their skits all the time. They always did a lot of good entertaining. And I tell you what, no matter what, no one could ever top them. Oh. Uh, are we talking about Cheech and Chong? Yeah, absolutely. Sorry, I was in the kitchen. I had to get my. Uh, my toaster strudel out of the oven. Yeah. Oh, well, toaster. Hey, you know, topping, topping different things. I hear you top me. Oh yeah, do tell. How's that? Yeah, well, there's, there's a, there's a song that might be out that, that you guys might have topped me on. By the way. <laughs> is that right? What is that? That must be uh, Love Shack. It must be something about that, but you know, I, I'll, I'll have to leave it up to you. You know, you'll have to you'll have to talk about it. But you talking about that oh. swoosh, swooshy wooshy thing? Oh, the wishy swooshy, oh wishy washy woman. Yeah, I, you know, <laughs> you guys did a pretty good job of that, whether you know it or not. And I hope everybody can hear it and watch it because I tell you, <laughs> I tell you what, I had a pretty good laugh out of that one. We still haven't made a video for it yet. We've still got our voices stuck behind your video, <laughs> which makes <laughs> us laugh whenever we watch it. You know, I can hear Randy's voice coming out of your mouth. <laughs> Nobody's seen that video. Nobody's seen that video but you. I know, I know, but I tell you what, you ruined my video, but I love it. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we only sent it to you. We told you we'd keep it private, and we did. Well, you know, if you have to get let everyone else hear about it, it just depends on everybody in your chat room. If they ever decide to go ahead and go on, maybe they might get an exclusive. How about that? Well, Joe and Darren seen it. We said we were going to send it to them. Well, I will post up the link to that video. Hey, let me ask you this. What? Can we put that in the Yankee and the Brit show and keep it private and only the people that are in the, are in the group can see it? 
Yes, hey, look, anything that, anything that I've done that you guys want to do, it is yours. Yes, you may have. You can put it out there for you guys. Enjoy it. Let everybody enjoy it. Uh, one per customer, thanks. <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, can I, can I give a shout-out to everybody, my friends and family over there in California? Hello, everybody in California. Yeah, go ahead. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope my dad and sister are listening, and, and Mary, I hope you're listening. So hello, and uh, yeah, just want to say hi. Did you get to see any of them for Thanksgiving? No, oh, I was over here. I was up in Wisconsin, by the way. Oh, that's too bad. How come you guys didn't get together? Uh, look at long distance. What do you think? All right. I get your point. Yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> Couldn't get a load out that way, huh? Pardon me? Couldn't get a load out that way? All right. Who wants to drive over them mountains with all that snow and stuff going on? Do you? No way. Uh, no. Remember, I quit. <laughs> Well, if you remember that I'm not too, I'm not much of an idiot driving out there in that weather. And uh, any time there's snow on a mountain, I run the other way. Yeah, I can relate. I've been froze on right. the top of a couple of those. Right. Joe's in the chat room. He wants to know what you're working on now. Oh, my God. I've got a song. I'm going down into the recording studio here in... Uh, I'm hoping a few weeks, maybe within within the month of December. Recording one, it's called uh, War Within. It is a song that's, uh, it, it'll rip your heart out. It's um, about PTSD. Um, you know, and, and not so much about PTSD, but the, uh, to let people know the awareness of what PTSD is. Um, uh, a lot of our soldiers come back with it. And what I found out is not so much our soldiers, but about 70% of Americans will suffer with PTSD in their time of a, a loved one, uh, a loss of a loved one, a car accident, something that may have happened that they may can't sleep and remember certain situations in life. But this song here is mainly about our soldiers and the families that have to deal with our soldiers. And um, we're going to be recording this here shortly. And uh, the proceeds of this song will be shared with our soldiers. And uh, we are going to be doing this here shortly. So I'm really anxious to get this thing done and get it out to everybody. And you guys will have a real good uh, early early advance on this one. Oh, great. Thanks. That'll be good. We appreciate that. Yeah. You know, you mentioned uh, some of the people outside of the soldiers and the vets that uh, have PTSD. And, you know, that's something that a lot of people really don't associate it with is the fact that it's not just the soldiers that can, uh, you know, have those kind of problems. It's also the families and uh, and a lot of other people surrounding those uh, soldiers. That, that's right. The sol- For instance, what about a soldier? What about the loss of one of our soldiers? What about that mother or father or the wife of a fallen soldier that might be having memories or sleepless nights remembering and thinking scenarios of what have, might have happened to their son or their husband. What happened? And that is, that's PTSD also. It's just, you, you just everything will spark that. A car accident, for instance, may happen. This person will see a car accident every day of their life, every night. They'll relive this. A truck crash. Um, you know, you slide off the highway in a semi-truck. What happens? I mean, you're going to relive this for many years until you can actually get some help and learn how to to deal with the situation. It's not always easy to deal with, but it is easy in time to kind of get through this and find a way to get over it. It's a very hard situation, but you can learn to get through the problems. What about some of the children, too, that are just at the age, you know, that have, that have just reached the age where they could understand that daddy's not coming back or mommy's not coming home again? I mean, it must be pretty rough on some of them, too. Oh, my God. You know, these, these children here, it's just going to be rough on these kids. And uh, the awareness of what we're trying to actually share with everybody, 
of this. Um, if it has anything to do with donations, giving to children for something to help them out with the situation, to help with school, help them with problems. Where, uh, did, where did the song come from? This was written by a friend of mine by the name of Tom Byrne. He is a writer. He's only been writing for a very short time. He's from Dublin, Ireland. Now, this young fellow here, oh, well, not young fellow, he's my age, but this fellow here can write a song. He had no clue. He wasn't sure about PTSD, but he wrote the song for us and asked how it was. When I heard it, I asked him if I could record this song. He didn't know what to say about it. Well, he doesn't want to get up in front of an audience and sing, and sing this song. But I told him this song has to come out, and I'd be willing to do this for him. And um, when you hear it for the very first time, I couldn't get through it. The first two times I heard this song, I couldn't get through it without choking up and having tears myself. It is, it's a very strong song, and I'm, I'm hoping that I can even get through it at the recording studio. I hope I can get through it okay. Um, it's it's going to hit you hard, and I hope that it will bring some awareness and help out. But i got to thank Tom for this song. It, it's it's uh, incredible. Well, who exactly sung it the first time then? Did, did the writer sing it himself at least once? He, yeah, he wrote, he wrote this song and put it on... Uh, on, on a recording with the guitar, and he shared it with JBC. He shared it with Joe and Darren first off, and Joe called me up and says, Howard, you got to hear this. Well, I heard this, and I was immediately corresponding with Tom in Dublin, Ireland, and let him know that I'd love to record this song, but he said he already did, and uh, he really didn't realize that his recording was just, um, you know, actually recorded, but not out there. And I was asking, are you going to release this song? He said he he didn't want to stand up in front of an audience. He, he's uh, afraid to. So we, we talked about it, and he was asking, well, where are the funds going to go? And I said, I'd like to share with uh, our soldiers. And he said, it's your song. And I thanked him for it. So we are going to do this for our soldiers. Why was he afraid to release it to the public? What was he worried about? Well, he doesn't want to stand up in front of an audience and sing. He just doesn't want to sing but to himself in his kitchen. That's, you know, some people have great songs. There are good writers out there that are afraid of audience. They're afraid to stand up in front of anybody and give a speech or something. You know, that's a certain thing that some people have, but never be afraid. If you've written a good song, Try to approach a writer, a singer, songwriter themselves. If you've got a good song, approach me. I want to hear what you guys have. If you don't want to get it out there, let me hear what you have. You know, and if I feel that it would hit me in the heart just as strong as it did you, I want to hear about it. Because, you know, a, a good songwriter needs to get their words out. There's a lot of good songwriters that don't want to share their, their, their writing with anybody. Right. And, uh, that's a shame. There's some good writers out there. Yes. Wow. Well, I'm sure you'll be able to pull it off, you know. Uh, just keep thinking about what it's all for. Um, you know, and you'll be able to plug through it. And you will do an awesome yeah. job of it, I am certain of it. When do you think you'll get it all squared up sometime in January? Uh, we are looking for actual release in March. We really don't want to give a big... We want to get that good punch. Right. Um, you know, well, heck, to be kind of frank about it, you know, you when you have, well, let me let me get into it more of a graphic way. Your show is pretty much open, so let's go ahead and get it the open public. Now, when you have a little gas, you might let a little squeak out once in a while, but you never get that full release out. So what I'm trying to do is get that full fledged part. <laughs> What exactly? I want to get that thing out all one time. That's a way. To, that's a way of talking to our listeners that they understand because they used to listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's no other way I can describe it with you guys, you know. So, you know, I don't want to let a little air out once in a while because I won't get that full effect. So, mind you, everybody, I'm going to have a big bad, big bad gas attack about March. So, be ready for it. <laughs> Be ready for it, and I 
hope it waters your eyes. You got to say one thing, Howard. My wife is honest. <laughs> <laughs> not only, not only when you let that that little squeak, it comes out as literally a annoying squeak. You know, when you let a big fart out, you know, you get the full blown sound. You know, a good old. Oh. <laughs> one for the one for the family album. <laughs> there you go. Oh. You know, I, I once, re- speaking of that, I recorded one time, I recorded a lightning show out of Lake Shasta, California. I was up on top of the houseboat, very quiet, and I was recording, videotaping a lightning storm coming. Well, it just so happened to have a bit of a lightning storm, and I just happened to release a little air. Oh, my God, I didn't know if I could hold it back in time, but it, it was pretty good. I <laughs> called it Mark Lightning. I'm going to have... I have to share it with you guys sometime because that was pretty good. I can't believe you just come on our show and started talking about your arse explosion. <laughs> you know, now that's, I, I tell you what, I think, this, I think the show made a, a, a quick 180, the opposite direction I wanted to go, but what the heck, you know? If you're laughing, that's oh, all we're worried about. Oh, boy. Uh, so, Anyhow, anyways, uh, did have a question for you. Where did oh, we go? Oh, yes, 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 we have a question. Uh, let's see. What was the music, what, what's the uh, musical approach to that song? Musical approach to it is uh, mainly a lot of string instrument. Um, it's uh, a lot of violin, a lot of sound of that. It is. It, it, it's more of a somber approach, real solid. Um, you don't want to kick into a song of that with drums and bass and all this other stuff because this kind of a song needs to have something to focus on, something to think about. So it's a very nice string sounding music. And so, so it is going to be a tearjerker. It is going to be a serious character, yes. Yeah, I can, I can, I can imagine just in my head what the music would be like without even hearing anything well, at this you point. Disappointed me then. I was expecting a right big. <laughs> well, I was, I was going to have a rap song, but I guess that wasn't going to work for you know for a thing. So we couldn't do the rap song, and I'm not a rapper, so I guess I can't do that. Well, I'm glad because we don't play that rap crap, anyways. Well, you know they have that. They have that country music and they have that rap music and they have that modern country rap. And, and if you abbreviate it properly, it's C R A P. You guys say more. <laughs> nope, that's plenty for me. There you go. So I don't do that. But no, this song here is strictly into a good ballad, a good song, good story. And uh, we have some plans in the future here to do a lot of stuff. Um, with donations and helping out. Now, we do have a cruise coming up, as well you know, but I'm not going to let you know too much about what we're going to try to do with that song. Well, I might let you know a little bit, but we're going to try to locate maybe somebody that has a son or daughter or family member that might be suffering from PTSD. And on that cruise, I think we might be doing a little bit of a a little bit of a donation, you might say. All yeah. right, let's let's leave it at that and let people just uh, let it stew in their minds for a little while. Well, we don't have anything planned yet, but it's an idea. It's a great yes. idea. Yes, yes, yes. So I think that we, you know, no, no need to hold something like that um, for personal. We need to help. And we got a lot of drivers out here that has family members that we can help. And um, we're going to do that. We're going to do that. Good. I think that's a great idea. Do you, uh, are you a fan of alternative country? I like, I like my old style country music, but some of the modern, I don't know about alternative country, but the alternative rock, you know, the, um, Jason Mraz, uh, you know, uh, oh, a few of those folks like that, uh, uh, Jack Johnson in Hawaii, good stuff like that. 
that kind of rock and roll, uh, a good storytelling ballads, those folks I really appreciate. These they got good stories. Now, now alternative country. I'm not sure where the alternative country is. What are, are they ballads? Or are are they just words that don't have any meaning? So that's what I want to find out. When you're talking about alternative country. Most of the ones that I like do have, and I think that's why I like them, is because they do have songs that do have meanings. I'm talking about like Canadian Cross, Ragweed, uh, um, Ray Wiley Hubbard, Jim McMurtry, uh, Hank Three, um, quite a few of the other ones like that. You know, they they all, all their songs have meanings, and some of them have some pretty serious songs. Well, now that kind of stuff you're talking about, yes. Now that kind of country music or alternative country, it kind of goes back to our roots of folk music, uh, back to our older country. Uh, yeah, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of even the older rock and roll because of storytelling of good ballads. If you can, if you can actually tell a story in three minutes and have everybody understand what you just talked about, about a story that was just a, it could be a lifelong event in your life but you can get it out in three minutes, and everyone knows what you were talking about, then that's the story you want to talk about. That kind of music there, yes, I'm, I'm a big fan of that. Well, that's exactly why I, uh, you know, as I grew up, I was into uh, to the rock, of course, in the 70s and uh, early 80s, you know, Led Zeppelin. Um, right. You know, uh, Rolling Stones, all those guys, uh, The Who, they all had music, and they all had stories in them, too. Uh, that's, you know, I've always enjoyed music that has a story. That's, I fell out with a lot of music for probably the late nineties into the, into the, well, up basically till now, because the music just has nothing but noise really to, you know, and of course the rap, they tell stories, but not the kind of stories I want to hear. I want to hear, you know, happy things, not death and destruction and that kind of crap. Right. Right. I'm a big, I'm a big fan of the Eagles and I'm a big fan of James Taylor stuff like that. These these songs are, this is our heritage. This is what we grew up on. But I'm, yet, these songs here will live on forever. Now, the Eagles, one of my favorite songs, Hotel California. I oh, love that. you still need to sing that with me. I'm surprised I didn't I'm surprised I didn't mention uh, James Taylor because he's like my A number one man. And in the 70s, of course, him and Carly Simon both, uh, you know, were were my killer artist. I mean, there there is, there still is nobody better in my book. Yeah, fire and Rain, good song, you know. I've seen Fire and I've seen Rain. Good song. Oh, my God. James Taylor was incredible. He got some good music. And like I said, the Eagles, yes, we are going to do some Eagles together. I'll go ahead and uh, uh, play that with my guitar, and we can do it. So, that ought to be interesting. Uh, Did you say that you recording places in Dallas. We could meet you if you wanted to. Well, we're going to have to figure something out because I'm going down toward Dallas here in a few weeks to record, I hope. So maybe you? we got to get together. Yeah, we could sing We could sing Ho Hotel California. Can you do that in one take with her so you can get her out of your hair? <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. If I've got to get it over with, yes, we can do it. I can play that song nonstop. I can do it. Now, you know, that song has got a lot of... A lot of chord changes, you know that. Uh, a, I don't know. A, if, you, if, you, if, if you've never played that song, oh my God. I used to be woke up with that thing every morning when I lived in Hawaii. My wife would put that thing on, and I'd be sleeping like a bad dog. Ain't nothing could wake me up for nothing. And all of a sudden, she played the, uh, the Hotel California uh, with the album Hill Freezes Over. And... I would jump up, grab my guitar, and before the first or second little bit comes in, I'm out there playing my guitar right along with it. I was loving that song. Yeah, baby. Good stuff, man. We grew up smoking a lot of weed to that stuff, too. It was great for that. Well, you know, I, 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 I'm driving a truck. I don't do that. <laughs> well, not now. I'm talking, you know, 40 years ago, of course. Okay. Back then, yeah, that that was a lot. It's, you know, that that actually may have helped out a lot of good songs, believe it or not. Hey, Joe wants yeah. to know, how do you find songwriters? You know, it, it, it's real strange. People, so many, there's so many people out there that write music. Uh, my friend Al Orkins Jr., uh, we just lost him here recently. Uh, great songwriter, truck 
driver. We were out at the truck stop. We were talking about music, and he said he was a songwriter. Well, he wrote uh, the songs, uh, These Trucks Are Made of Gold, and Give Me Fair Warning on my first album. Now, now, these, now this is just a songwriter that he didn't have a way to put it out, didn't know much about doing whatever. But I was really into uh, wanting to get an album out and just talking to people. Anybody, if they have some good music or have a good idea, you know, everybody writes lyrics. A lot of times, a good song, if you look at a song, you have a line. At the end of that line, you have a, a, a word. At the end of the next line, it might rhyme with the first line's word at the end. Songs are like poetry. So people don't really realize they have a good song, but if it's a poet, a poetry kind of style, these kind of words are good ballads. Whether people know it or not, they might not know they're a songwriter, but realize they have a good poem. Well, whether they know it or not, a poem is the matter of the good timing of a song. You have to have so many beats per line in order to make a good song. You have to make it work just right. You can't spread it out so far or so long. But this is just a little bit about songwriting. Um, it's it's really um, it's an art, but there are people out there that don't really realize that they are a songwriter, but they were. They, they've written some beautiful songs, whether they know it or not. And I've seen some real nice work. Do you sing and, anything other than country? I'll sing whatever it takes. If I can actually get some of this alternative rock, you know, like the Jason Mraz, you know, I'll, I'll try a little bit of something. All you got to do is put a diff different stroke of music to it. And I don't have a problem doing any kind of music. I won't do, I won't do rap because that's nothing more than talking with a, you know, with a cookie in your mouth. You know, they don't, they don't talk. They just, you know, they're just, they just mumble something. You yeah. know, I don't want to do rap music. Yeah, yeah, I will. It just falls out of their mouth. It just falls out of their mouth. They're not in key. They're not in tune. They could care less if it has a, a a certain tone to it. A good song, you have to have a good balance of your key while you're singing. You have gotta have a. It's gotta be smooth. It's gotta. It's gotta flow. You know, you, if you don't have it, you don't have it. You know. And, and as far as I'm concerned, sorry to say, if you guys like rap music out there, I'm not putting it down, Pat, but it just, to me, it just doesn't sound like it has any key to it. It just words. Like See, this. Dylan, if you're listening, my little brother Dylan likes rap. Tell him how shit rap is, Howard. <laughs> <laughs> What's that again? I said, I said, I hope my little brother's listening tonight. He likes rap. What a load of rubbish rap is. Oh. Well, you know what, well, we might just teach your little brother a thing or two about actually learning about good rock and roll or good country music Please. once in a while. I, he might he might grow off one of these days, okay? So he will learn. He will learn some good ballads and good country music. Yay. Okay? <laughs> okay? <laughs> Yay. You did a cruise with uh, Willie P. Richardson? I did a cruise with Willie P. Richardson way back when, and... Uh, Oh my gosh, this is several years ago. I took my dad on a cruise with me. And, uh, let's see. Willie T. Richardson was going to be doing a song of mine called Soldiers and Truckers. And uh, we sat, for, we sat down for lunch one night or one afternoon. And, uh, he said, you know, I'd still like to do that song of yours on, on one of my albums. I said, that's great. He says, yeah, but I'm not going to do it tonight. I said, you're not. He says, no. Rehearsals at six o'clock. You go on with me at seven o'clock. I said, well, thanks a lot. He says, you're welcome. Well, I had no choice, but when he started doing his show, he introduced me out there, and it was like, a, you know, when when he introduced me, it was like a pity clap. People were saying, okay, well, okay, I'll clap for this guy, but who the hell is he? Nobody had a clue, and I didn't expect anybody to. I didn't expect me to go up there and do that song. But anyhow... After that song, I'm looking right now down on the stage in front was Gene Watson. The trucking bozo was down there with his wife. Gene Watson down there as a guest. 
and I just like, why am I up here? Gene Watson is supposed to be up here. I'm supposed to be down there watching him. But I sang that song with my heart. And, you know, I had more people, I saw more flashes going off, people taking pictures and all this stuff, and I was actually able to sing my very first song on on the cruise with a lot of folks there watching that. That meant so much to me. Wow. And from that point, from that point, I always blame Willie P. Richardson. It's all your fault. It's on my <laughs> CD. It's all his fault. Because, you be. know, he, he, <laughs> he kind of got me involved in it, and uh, I was real proud of that. Yeah, I guess it must have had chills after that, huh? I, I did. I did. I couldn't even imagine such a thing happening. Yeah. I would need, I'd probably be speechless. I'm not big in front of crowds, you know. I like it right here behind the mic where I'm safe. But... Uh, Man, I just couldn't even imagine getting up in front of somebody like that. I'd just be beyond a well, you, I couldn't even imagine it. Well, well, you know, it, it really was. Um, it really was intimidating seeing a legend as a Gene Watson right there in front of me. And I got a picture with him afterwards, and he really said he loved that song. He thought that was really nice. And to have a nice compliment from him, to me, that kind of went a long ways. Whether it's just being nice or, or not, but still actually sit down and talk to him afterwards was really quite a pleasure. Uh, he's a gentleman. His music, I, I would pray, would live on forever because he is a very good and classic singer. He's very good at what he does. Gene Watson. Absolutely. Um, Larry just loves the hell out of him. We play a lot of his music on here. Oh, yeah. He, he's incredible. Yeah, he's incredible. Farewell Party was, has probably been one of my favorite songs that he ever did. And it's, it's, it's probably, I think, his signature song, which I believe it is. And that's a great song. That's a great song. And he did that on the cruise, and, you know, even after all those years, I still had, you know, the hair standing up on my arms and the goosebumps on there. It was just incredible. He still has it. Still has it. We used to play that for a closing song quite a number of times, uh, Farewell Party, because for it's such Larry. a great... Yeah. <laughs> Definitely yeah. for Larry. But uh, I think one of my favorites from him is Old Man and His Horn. That Whoever's playing the horn in that is just... I just can't even... My, I just get chills when I hear that horn. It's fantastic work. Right. It's incredible. Um, you know, I, I've been very fortunate in my time here... Um, get and meet a lot of these nice folks here that I never even in my wildest dreams ever thought I'd ever get anywhere near what I'm doing right now. My second album, I, I, I even had the pleasure of even recording my song in the studio with Bruce Torgan, which is a bass player from Foreigner. He, he mastered our CD and plays bass and recorded us. We have Scott Joss, fiddle player from Earl Haggard playing fiddle and doing backup vocals for me. We have Ben Haggard, Ben Haggard, Merle Haggard's son, playing lead guitar and playing and doing some backup vocals for me. And after we recorded this, it's like, what the heck did we get these big professionals doing standing behind me doing this music? You know, you get very lucky sometimes to have someone of this caliber standing behind you. And when you do, you just got to heads up and, and thank them all for all the hard work they did with us. And I'm very proud of that. I'm really proud of that. It's, yeah, um, how cool I'm, is I'm that? How cool is that, man? I Like I said, I just can't even picture something like that in my mind happening. That's just beyond cool, really. Right. We have their names uh, on that album, you know, and obviously you don't put their name in there for no reason. And... Uh, I was very proud to uh, to be a part of that second album like that, um, and it, it's just incredible that we had this opportunity. Oh, there's nothing I love more than to watch, you know, musicians in the studio actually cranking out a tune, and it's just, uh, you know, it'd be seventh heaven to go into a place like that. I, I interrupt this broadcast with some very, very important information from Christine Mouth in the chat room. She said... One fart burns approximately 67 calories, 
farting 52 times a day in one day can burn one pound of fat. Then why am I still having a fat arse? <laughs> I should be skinny as a rake if I if I uh, lost all that weight from farting. Oh my gosh, can we go back to that story again? <laughs> <laughs> yes, one fart. Oh. Welcome to my world. <laughs> one fart burns approximately 67 calories. Farting 52 times in one day can burn one pound of fat. Did, well, did, did she know this for a fact? Or is she, uh, is she such a tiny young lady that if she is, I tell you what, we ought to go ahead and do a radio show or a TV show. Fart. <laughs> Fart for weight, or fart, I mean, whatever. <laughs> yeah, she ought to make a fortune for putting out her little book of farting for cal fart calorie, you know. <laughs> make, a, make, a, make a diet for this, you know. Here's how you do it. You mix this, this, and this, and rip a good one, you know. I was sorry to interrupt you there. I just had that important information that I had to get out. I do have a couple, <laughs> I do have a couple of questions I, I, for you. Um, why did you decide to get back into music? Why did what? Why did you decide to get back into music? I've never been out of music. Um, I've been into music um, since the um, Air Force back in 1980 when I met my friend Deborah Martin. Uh, it's on my second album with me. She and I finally put an album out after all these years. But she's always been pushing me to do my music and keep it going. I've never been out of music, but ever, actually never had had the opportunities to pursue it. I, I don't want to ever get out of it. It's just that, you know, we all have a job to do in our life. We all have a, a purpose to do. And we, we, a lot of us drive, excuse me, a lot of us drive our trucks, you know. We, um, this is how we support our family. This is what we do. Music only is is a hobby. Uh, it is a pastime. It's fun to do, but sometimes can't always pay the bills. But I haven't gotten out of music. It just depends on how many people will like my music in order if I will ever get out of a truck to do my music full-time. I've yeah. never gotten out of music. It's just a matter of, do I get out permanently, and how do I share it with fans? That's what I want to do. And so. what what convinced you to do the 2017 cruise? Did Dave have a, have like a gun up to your head or something? Well, this was offered to me due to the fact that I know Joe and Darren on the KBC, I've known Darren for quite so many years. He's always been a very big fan of my music, and um, he talked to Dave about this and said, you got to put him on there. Well, Dave apparently looked at what I had out and said, yes, we got to have him out there. Well, it it, it is actually um, a chance to get back into it with the drivers again. I am a driver, and I want to share it with the drivers, so why not do another cruise? I've done one with Truck and Bozo. I mean, why not get up and do another one and, uh, you know, share share the spotlight with uh, Brad James? You know, we can, we can have a good time up there, you know, and it's going to be, it's going to be crazy, so I'm not going to, I'm not going to say no. When you have an offer to come up and share some good music, well, I'm going to do that. And uh, when you come on the cruise, you're going to have a great time with us. Yes. Well, uh, we are going to bang on a tune, if you don't mind, mister. Um, we're going to get Mrs. Swooshy Wooshy Woman on. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to make up some arrangements with you guys in a few weeks. Well, I hope you can. I, I really do. I, I, I'd like to... <laughs> I'd love to see your version out there on YouTube, by the way. Um, <laughs> uh -oh. You know, you guys actually do some pretty darn good videos, by the way. I I was quite impressed. So, uh, 
you know, why not do something like that? I think you could, uh, I think you could destroy me. Have a good time. <laughs> yeah. Well, we certainly do that if we don't do anything else. If nothing else, I give you permission to try, okay? Yes, sir. Well, in that case, we'll just see what we can bang out. Yes, yeah. sir. I you know, you know what still got my attention, by the way? Boy, I tell you what, farting way away. I tell you what, I'm still thinking of that. That that that, that conversation you just had in the, on the <laughs> chat room, that's not, my, that's not my curiosity of. I tell you, uh, what can we... You know, the bad thing... Now, what I gotta I gotta share a story with that. The worst possible. Now, I don't know if she's right about burning calories, but I know I did burn myself. Uh, is the the, the what is that? The bacon? Uh, oh heck, double Whopper, uh, Junior Whopper with double Junior Whopper with cheese and onion rings. <laughs> that is the that is the worst combination that I've ever. That I've ever had. It won't. It will not reduce weight, but it will definitely burn your eyes. Now, if it does burn eyes, I wonder how many calories it will burn, because that launched flames for hours. <laughs> well, I'm a Burger so, King. I'm a Burger King man. So next time I go, I'll test it and I'll have Donna uh, kind of have a few whiffs and see if you can get an idea how many calories are going with it. The Junior Whopper and Onion Rings, and that's it. Now, I tell you, that is a deadly combination that will destroy your insides. And I, I tell you what, every one of those I ate, I probably should have lost about 50 pounds. I'm going to have a Whopper <laughs> tonight. That might that might destroy my insides. Well, don't, hey, eat, Randy. Don't, <laughs> eat too, don't eat too many of them. You'll disappear. You know, I tell you what, that's probably why they call it the Whopper in the first place, because it is a Whopper. When it comes out, it's a Whopper. A Big Mac will clean <laughs> me out pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, another, oh my God. another thing is chicken, too. Boy, I'll tell you what, if I eat chicken, my God, you can guarantee I'm going to be floating above the chair for the next hour or so. If, if you eat chicken, do you lay eggs? Fuck off! Fuck, 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 fuck off! <laughs> Just wondering. <laughs> well, just when we thought this show couldn't get any lower, Howard Salmon comes on and uh, is more disgusting than I am. <laughs> oh, laying eggs is a different story. I'll tell you about that later in another day, but not right tonight. Oh, my gosh. Sounds like a good idea to me. <laughs> oh, well, I'll tell you. I don't, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to have half of the trucking industry tonight driving down the road and crashing, laughing too hard after this story. So I will not tell about it at this date, but I will tell about, just remind me later about laying an egg and I will, I'll, I'll fess up to it. Go ahead and spread the word. We can always use more listeners. <laughs> Okay, we, <laughs> we can do that. <laughs> All right, Howard. Well, thanks for hanging out with us for a little bit. Hey, my pleasure. My pleasure. I'm, I'm glad to come on any time, and, you know, please feel free to give me a shout, and I'll definitely come in and say. All right. Well, we're going to throw on our version of your song, Wishy Washy Woman. Swooshy Wooshy. <laughs> Wishy Washy Whatever you want to do. <laughs> she can't get it right for no reason. Oh, it's okay. She sang a good version of it, though. Yes, she did. We had a blast. I can't tell you how many times we just laughed like hell doing that. It was and we great. jammed our socks off in that, uh, you know, that bit in the middle, in between the verses, you know? Yeah. yeah. We're playing the piano and can't, we're playing the violin. Just can't thank you enough for letting us toy around with that. <laughs> we? My, my pleasure. My pleasure. Destroy it all you can. Have a good time with it. I have no problem with that. Just enjoy it. All right, on that note, we're going to fly. Thank you, sir. Uh, truck them safe. Be careful, and uh, we'll catch you soon. Looking forward to seeing everybody on the cruise. Yes, Bye. sir. Thanks, Howard. This is Howard Salmon, and you're listening to the Yankee and the Bridge Show. My friends, they couldn't have done better. Here's their version of Wishy Washy Woman. You're a wishy washy woman. You best clean up your act. 
you don't change your ways, I ain't never coming back. It's hard to make your mind up, and I don't give a damn. You're a wishy-washy woman, and I'm just what I am. You say that you love me, then you let me go. You can't make up your minds how much love. You tear me up and throw me out. I think it's love you lack. You're a wishy-washy woman. Someday you'll want me back. You're a wishy-washy woman. You best clean up your act. If you don't change your ways, I ain't never coming back. It's hard to make your mind up, and I don't give a damn. You're a wishy-washy woman, and I'm just what I am. To try to second guess you, girl. Now that would be the test. You're just so unpredictable. You're just like all the rest. You're a wishy-washy woman. You best clean up your act. If you don't change your ways, I ain't never coming back. It's hard to make your mind up, but I don't give a damn. I'm a wishy-washy woman, and I'm just what I am. You're a wishy-washy woman, and I'm just what I am. Oh, Howard Salmon, where are you, son? Wish you were here, buddy. Too <laughs> much. Roll Tide, baby. That's what I'm talking about. Who's next? Come on, get in line. We ready. Yankee and the Brit, the RTM Radio Network, 926. Thank you, Howard Salmon, for coming by and hanging out with us for a little bit. I just love that guy. Yes. What a riot. Never have a dull moment with him around. <laughs> silly, silly, Bob. Oh, my goodness. And who knew it was going to go the way of the fart? <laughs> <laughs> and you know me. I love toilet humor. I, I tell guess. you what, I freak out, though, if I get any, any shit on my hands when I'm wiping my arse. But toilet humor... I just love it. It is the funniest thing. Why in the, the hell would world. you be getting shit on your hand, anyways? Well, I don't know. You don't know. you use paper? Well, not all the time. I mean, um... <laughs> I'll get you a corn cob like the old days. <laughs> oh, believe me, you know that day when I had a really, really bad gut, and I was like, ah, I got some on my hand. <laughs> all right, all right, easy over there. Oh man. So, anyways, <laughs> thanks, Howard. Man, it's great. Always get a laugh and a good story out of him, and I love a good story, that's for sure. Somebody wanted to hear this tune, so uh, here it is. It's me and Dang Me. Joe. The Joe. Well, I hear I sit high getting ideas. Ain't nothing but a fool that lives like this. Out all night and running wild. The woman sit home with a month old child. I said, Dang me, dang me. They'll take a rope and hang me. High from the highest tree. Woman, would you wait for me? Rip, dip, 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 boo, boo, boo. Rip, dip, 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 boo, boo, boo. Just sitting around drinking with the rest of the guys. Six rounds bought, and I bought five. Spent the groceries and half the rent. I like fourteen dollars having twenty-seven cents. I said, dang me, dang me. They ought to take a rope and hang me. High from the highest tree. Woman, would you wait for me? Rip that that baby dip bo bo bo. Rip that baby dip bo bo bo. Now they say roses are red and 
violets are purple, and sugar is sweet, and so is maple purple. And I'm the seventh out of seven sons. My pappy was a pistol packing son of a gun. I said, dang me, dang me. They ought to take a rope and hang me. High from the highest tree. Danny, would you wait for me? Rip, dip, 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 bo, bo, bo. Yankee and the Brett, the RTM Radio <laughs> Network. Larry, don't forget the Montgomery Ward catalog, too, amongst all those. Grandma used to call it Monkey Wards. So uh, that was another one of those catalogs you could add to the ass-wiping list. <laughs> Sears catalog and corn cobs. That's right. That's all you had to wipe your ass with way back when. <laughs> Seriously. Oh my god, I can just imagine that paper. <clears throat> paper? What about a damn corn cob? <laughs> you had hemorrhoids. You had hemorrhoids, buddy. It was instant removal. <laughs> <laughs> I can remember the toilet paper in my primary school, and it was like that tracing paper. Um, do you know what you want to mean? Laura, you used to use green stamps to wipe your ass? <laughs> no, go ahead. No, I was saying, do you remember the toilet? The, did you ever have toilet paper that was like tracing paper? Oh, you mean that real thin stuff? Yeah. Oh, I always was, popped a finger through that. And it was, yeah, but it was almost it was almost see through, um, and it wasn't tissue. It was like it was like like that grease poop paper that you put in the oven. It kind of looked like that. Oh, you mean the ones that scratches your ass? Yeah. Yeah, not good. <laughs> that's for that's way too cheap. I was never that cheap to buy anything else. That was at school, that was, and in the public toilets in town. Oh, it's, uh, whoo, whoo, you know, like toilet paper. Who's not buying that stuff, really? Your brother used green stamps to wipe his ass. About all they were worth it after a while What there. does she mean by green stamps? Well, let's see, gold bond stamps. There you go, man. I used to, you know what, Larry? I used to collect gold bond stamps. I got all kinds of shit collecting those stamps, boy. <laughs> shit. <laughs> what? <laughs> It wasn't supposed to be funny. Oh, all right. Well, it was. Stamp. You collected stamps over there, didn't you? Didn't yeah. we have yeah, this discussion like little, once? Yeah, your little tiny stamps that you put on the Yeah, letter. gold bond stamps are used to get them at truck stops. Uh, green stamps, like S&H green stamps, used to collect those. They had I, little books that you collect the stamps every time you buy groceries. Then you fill what, the books. And when you get a full ass? book. Let me finish! <laughs> oh, just cut me off. What? Fuck it. What? So she wiped her ass with a green stamp. Which, not with just one stamp, I don't think. Probably a whole sheet of them, I would hope. Oh. I don't know if you got a little tiny puckered up rectal cavity. I suppose one <laughs> stamp might do it. <laughs> Anyways, you get your green bond or your like your uh, S and H green stamps. You get those when you buy groceries, and you, they give you so many for however much amount your groceries were. And you got little paper books, and you used to collect the stamps and stick them in the book. And when you got a full book, you got so many dollars off of something. Oh, so you got some money off toilet roll. I thought you meant that And you save enough. <laughs> Will you shut the fuck up and let me finish one goddamn <laughs> fucking time? <laughs> you fill all these goddamn books up with these fucking stamps, and then you go buy something and you get it for free. Now I'm done. Talk. <laughs> and now, back to more music with the Yankee and the Brit in the RTM Radio Network. How y'all doing? Yeah, my name's Colt. Who in the hell requested that? Mouth requested some Colt Ford. Well, did you have to pick that? I just clicked on anything. How did that guy ever get to be popular singing Ed crap? <laughs> oh, well, if that's what she wants, that's fine. We play your requests and we love doing it, but jeez, God, ugh, what the hell? How y'all doing? Yeah, no! Is... What the hell? Nah! Ah! Hit the wrong damn button again. Uh, ah! That's better. Here we go. Enjoy, Larry. The old man told. The Yankee and the Brit in the RTM Radio Network. Anyways, uh, <laughs> yeah, if y'all are coming over this way, um, you can get the tractor over here with no problem, but I don't think you can get the the whole damn thing around a couple curves up here and if you lose it if you lose it uh you know if you if you lose it 
you lose it when you come around these curves because the one, the ditch is really deep. You'll, yeah, it'll go over. Yeah, uh, you get round it and just to the right, there's just a... I'm not a sure ditch. if it, you know, I suppose if you shortened it up, it'd probably be all right. But anyways, you got to park it in the street. Well, he said he'd be renting a, he'd probably rent a pickup or something. Well, it depends on where you're leaving your truck. If you're leaving it in Dallas, yeah. If you're just going to park up here at the corner, we'll just come pick you up. Yeah, because the Bell's Market's only just around the corner. Yeah, they have a lot of drivers leave their trucks there. The uh, thing with bringing a tractor up here, if it's rained a couple days before y'all get here, uh, driveway won't handle the weight of the tractor. Not that I'm worried about you getting stuck. You won't get stuck, but I'll have to listen to Pop about the driveway getting all fucked up. So <laughs> <laughs> There are other outside issues that must be reckoned with. So uh, that, well, that was my point there. All right. Anyways, got another request here. Let's bump these requests off, and we got to get out of here because we got about 12 minutes left. Chris Ledoux. This cowboy's hat, by request. Well, there's Yankee always the been groups of people that never could see eye to eye. But I always thought if they ever had a chance to... This is Darren Heller. Come join us in the Lido Lounge Sunday Night Edition with SS Cruises and the Yankee and the Brit. Tired of paper logs? There's a better way to track your driving hours. The Keep Trucking Electronic Logbook. It's an app that lets you do your logs on your iPhone or Android device for free. If you make a mistake... You can edit your logs just like you would on paper. Keep Trucking alerts you if you have any violations so you never have to worry about failing an inspection. And best of all, Keep Trucking is free. Search Keep Trucking on the Apple App Store or Google Play Store or visit KeepTrucking.com to learn more. And remember, keep on trucking with the Keep Trucking app. Hey, everyone, this is Cheryl from Chuckin' Roundup. Y'all don't forget to come out on Thursdays at 4 p.m. Central Times. This Thursday, December 3rd, we're going to have a special guest, KeepTrucking.com. They're going to come in and teach us how to use their apps. It's great for owner-operators. I'm a personal use of it. And they're also going to explain how it helps with the e-log system. Y'all come on out, join us. Look forward to seeing y'all. I'd have to agree. Daddy's hands and Holly Dunn by request with the Yankee and the Brit, the RTM Radio Network. You guys just rock the hell out of my weekends. I got to tell you what, 9.56, just a few minutes left and we are out of here, man. We got to be out of here. We got to bug out first thing in the morning and then uh, be back to the shop and get some shit done, get t-shirt shipped. We got shit to do. We got shit to do. We do. And I hope y'all got shit to do. I hope you got a safe weekend wherever you're trucking off to. Whatever you're doing, watch the ice and snow. Rain all over the goddamn place. Still been raining here all day. Supposedly tomorrow, no more rain. And Tuesday, we'll actually get to see some sunshine. And maybe the gloomies will go away. Wouldn't that be a plus? Really. I can't wait to get outside and put that metal on that roof. I was out there today. That shit's so goddamn wet. I'm surprised the wood ain't rotted right off of it already. You say wood. Mm, no. I'm going to have to watch my choice of words. <laughs> <laughs> the Yankee and the Brit, the Art Tim Radio Network. Thank you all, every single one of you, for coming by. Thank you, Brenda and Mr. and Mrs. Dave and Sandy and Laura and Joe and Darren. And the list is endless of all of them. Larry, Larry, Larry. And Dave even had something interesting to say today. Yeah, what the hell was it? I don't was remember. That all about? I Couldn't don't have been too interesting. I forgot already. <laughs> Sorry, Dave. Not nice. And thank you, Christine, for coming by and hanging out with us, like always, and Sandy. And uh, who else was in here? Jeez, uh, I missed something? Not quite sure. All you other folks outside the chat room out there, thank you all kindly. You know how much we appreciate you tuning in and enjoying the show. Uh, feel free to call anytime you want. Send us a message if you like on Facebook. Join the, uh, the uh, Yankee and the Brit RTM Radio Network page on Facebook if you like. Uh, thank you, Karen. Uh, let's see. Lee was here earlier too. I forgot about Lee and, uh, anybody else that was here. Everybody else. Thank you much. We're going to blow this pop stand. We'll, uh, we'll <laughs> no more farting jokes. <laughs> Shut up. Yeah. We're done. Gone. We don't need to fart now. 958 <laughs> and we are out of here. Say goodnight, Donna. Night, Donna. See y'all. Uh, let's see. Whoa. I better round that up real quick. Where the hell are we at here? It's uh, Sunday. We'll be back Wednesday. With the uh, JBC Charity Spotlight at uh, 8 o'clock. So come join us. All request whatever you want. We'll get it. We'll got it. If we ain't got it, we'll get it. And blah, blah, blah. Thursday, 4 p.m. Kevin Young over We're here there. in the driver's seat driver's with the trucking seat. roundup. Got a good guest this week. Come check it out. Other than that, we are out of here. We'll see you. Bye-bye. Team Rant, what are we going to do today? Same thing we always do, Brit. Try and take over radio. The Yankee and the Brit. The Yankee and the Brit. One is 
is the genius, the egg is a twit. On the radio, the beans have been spiced. The Yankee, the Yankee, and the Brit, 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 Brit. Before the show is done, the king will have begun by the end of the show. The heads will explode. The Yankee and the Brit, the Yankee and the Brit. The ranting campaign can never be explained To prove the radio work, they'll take over the earth The Yankee, the Yankee and the Brit Brit, 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 Brit,